Which parts of your face do you have fillers? What? Everywhere. Oh. Really? Wait, in your cheek? Yeah. In your cheek? Really? Yeah. Hi, it's Hazel. Hey, it's Zira. And I'm Jermaine. And welcome back to another episode of Clarity's Hash Podcast. You know, here at Hash Podcast, mm-hmm. we always talk about dispelling taboo topics. Mm. I can't believe it's taken us years to talk about what we're going to share with you today. It's about aesthetic and beauty treatments. Mm-hmm. Invasive and non-invasive. And to do that, we need an expert. For sure. Let's welcome Dr. Jessica Chua. Hello. Hi, I'm Dr. Jessica Chua. I'm an aesthetic doctor and currently working at Felix Lee Medical Aesthetics Clinic. So I'm very happy to be on this podcast to share my knowledge with you guys and oh. hopefully give you a bit of insight about the aesthetic world. I'm I excited. also need insight <laughs> yeah. on, on this. Correct. I can't <laughs> stop staring at doctor. You're so beautiful. Your skin is Thank incredible. You. <laughs> Your skin is like porcelain. Everybody, you got to come onto YouTube to see Dr. Jessica's face. Yes, okay. close, close up. up. My no. goodness. <laughs> what is this? It's glass. First question, okay. how much makeup do you have right now? Because I don't have a lot of makeup at home. So when I was told I had to be here and then I looked at my makeup collection, I was like, Die la. <laughs> oh, it expired because I think since like COVID, I haven't really used makeup. What? Like, she, doesn't she doesn't need. need. I need no, to but... share my NARS products with you. Like we just did an episode. <laughs> oh my gosh, the products are like, incredible. Okay, okay so okay. I, I mainly have like a uh, tinted sunscreen, which mm-hmm. is like my main. Like when I have to go for events, it's just tinted sunscreen because don't need skills to apply. I think like I'm bad at applying makeup because of the lack of practice. So it has a good also, problem. Yeah, yes. 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 no, but there are some events like you guys look so gorgeous as well. Hey, thank you. Like thank you very much. We got a lot of things to hide. No, <laughs> honestly, I feel like makeup is like a whole new skill mm. altogether. And like your skin looks so good, I can't even tell if you guys need any like skin treatments also because Aww. it's as glowy as like, any of the doctors. Oh, like, honestly, really. Not me who spent 90 minutes on this makeup. <laughs> it's not even me who did it, but wow. We need to know, like PSA to everyone, right? Yeah. What is the secret to your skin? I have the benefit of having such good mm. skin is because I work in a clinic, right? Mm. So I have access to all of these treatments and I also have time to do it because I'm right there. So consistency, I feel, is the most oh. important. Mm. A lot of people, they do like one treatment. They do like one laser and then they're like, ah, it wasn't so good. And then like, you know, after that, they don't go back and they say like, ah, it doesn't work. Well, but it's clear because you only did one session, so it doesn't work. Everything comes with consistency, whether it's exercise, it's diet, skincare, mm. taking care of your skin, doing treatments for your skin. Consistency is key. So isn't skincare enough? Isn't like drinking mm. water, sleeping well, d- using like a... 10 step skincare, that's not enough. Hey, that's what I do, by the way. My skin is still like that. <laughs> okay. I feel like you're too harsh on yourself. Aww, thank you. No, way, she loves herself very much. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and we love her very yeah. much too. I feel like skincare is like something that you do as a maintenance at home. Mm-hmm. But it's unfortunately not going to be enough to really counteract the processes of aging and things mm-hmm. like that, which happens at a much greater pace than what your skincare can keep up to. Right. It's like when you wash your hair at home, right. you use like conditioner and stuff, but it's never as nice as when you go to the salon and mm-hmm. you get like a treatment done and then you feel like, whoa, my hair suddenly feels like so good, right? Because this is not something that you can do by yourself at home. Mm-hmm. Like you yeah. need like the professionals to help. But some people those. might question, okay, I get one laser set done Mm. but how long can it last me okay so i think this is very dependent there are like a gazillion types of lasers out Mm. there so lasers is a very generic term Mm. in most cases most lasers need to be done like once a month for maintenance yeah so it takes time and effort yeah so that's why i feel like because i'm working in a clinic Mm. it just makes it much easier for me because i only need like 10 15 minutes to do the lasers for myself in between my patients or whatever right Mm. okay but here begs the question right i know we're talking about aesthetic treatments and all that when it comes to altering your beauty Mm -hmm. lasers invasive non-invasive do you think that that's about insecurities or is it about boosting your confidence i feel like it's a spectrum. When you kind of correct your insecurities, naturally you're also boosting your confidence, right? It's a fine line. You need to know where you are on that line and when to stop. If you're on an extreme of like the insecurities, then you end up going down like a negative path of Mm. constantly trying to do treatments in order to fill up all these insecurities, right? Mm. But I feel like those people are actually the minority. A lot of people think that 
when you do aesthetic treatments, you're one of those super insecure people and you have like body image issues. Mm. But actually, those are the minority of the people that we see in the clinics anyway. Most people do it for the confidence boosting section mm. because they probably were much more beautiful when they were younger. But over oh. time, things have changed. So it's not that they want to change themselves, but they have noticed that their face is changing and they want to stop it. They want to look like how they did back then. So that's why they do treatments to restore what they had back then. So I think that's a misconception. A lot of people think that the patients who go to seek aesthetic treatments are all like vain or like they want to change like a lot of things about themselves. But majority of the patients, they don't want their face to change anymore. They're trying to stop the change with time. I can't say I subscribe to that, but whatever happened to loving yourself the way that you are or like aging gracefully, you know, how come, you know, it's changed so much? Well, how old are you? We are 29, 30, 30, 30. Okay, so this is the age where you'll start to see the changes <gasps> happening. <laughs> dang, dang, dang. <laughs> this is the period where you notice the most change. No, this is I'm not very happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because when you're in your early 20s, right, you have like a huge base of like your collagen. Mm. So even as you age and the amount of collagen that you produce gets less and less each year, you don't see it because your store is high. But when you go into your late, 20s, your 30s, that's when it starts to deplete into your stores. And that's when every year you look at yourself from like when you're 30 to 31, you're oh, like, no. hey, why do I look so different? It's just been like one year or even six months. But I see like there's a difference in how I look. I look so tired now. Like, why is that? So this is the period where your collagen stores are starting to be depleted because your body just cannot keep up in terms of production anymore. And so this is also the age group where a lot of people start coming to seek mm. aesthetic treatments. So it's not that they are not able to love themselves mm. for how they look, but it's just that they are noticing a change and they are trying to stop that change. It's the same as if... As you age, you know, like uh, all metabolisms drop as well, right? Mm. And then you find that, oh no, now I'm eating less, I'm gaining more weight. So people combat that is that they end up dieting more and then they end up going to gym, to exercise in order to try to maintain what they had in the past. It's a race against time, basically. And yeah. we're trying to combat that. Yeah. Okay, but here's a myth or like a huge misconception. Aesthetic treatments are a form of plastic surgery. Is that true or is that not true? No lah. Mm. <laughs> so plastic surgery is very specific. It's okay. surgery. Surgery after all. Mm -mm. Plastic surgery makes major structural changes that mm. most aesthetic treatments won't be able to give you. So for example, if you do double eyelid surgery. Last time you have no double eyelid, you want a double eyelid, so you go for surgery to create that double eyelid. Mm -hmm. It's creating something that you didn't have naturally on your own. Most of the time for aesthetic treatments or like the non-invasive aesthetic kind of treatments anyway, it's more like enhancing what you already have. If you don't have a double eyelid, I cannot give you a double mm. eyelid because this is something that you st structurally don't have to begin with. Mm. So you're not a a surgeon doctor no i'm not a yeah, surgeon so you don't cut into people's skin <laughs> yes yeah we don't do okay. any surgery at but all. when they say invasive and non-invasive right hmm. why is a needle going into my skin not invasive because never cut you is yeah it, yeah is yeah, it yeah feels invasive when it goes <laughs> yeah. like, ah, you're invading me and yeah, then sometimes so when not. i go for the treatments mm. i like to take a video and when i see how deep the needle goes in like, i like to make content you know yes. but after i see how deep the needle goes in i was like okay i'm not making this content no more <laughs> well it's much less invasive as compared to surgery mm -hmm. for sure yeah. so that's why they categorize it as such so at this point, right, we're hitting 30. What should we be doing? Well, there's no fix like what should everybody be doing mm. when you're 30. But it's more like what are your concerns and then we address those concerns accordingly. Let's be honest here, right? What have you girls done? I'll go first. I've gone for Botox on my forehead because if you see, when I raise my brows, there's lines on my forehead. Ding ding. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so it's been there since young like mm. since I was a little girl yeah well, is this like structural like it's everybody has it that's, really? your, that's your muscles activating raise your brows Jim. mine is oh, I got Botox too on oh, my forehead okay. <laughs> but mine is genetic so a lot of uh, people on my dad's side of the family have these lines on the forehead they all look the same so I knew it was going to be a problem already. Yes. So I started getting it when I was younger. That's good. To combat You're it. You're preventing yeah. it. Yes. yes. Thank you, doctor. Prevention <laughs> better than <laughs> cure. The lines now, but yeah. Yeah. I, I still have the lines because <sighs> I think it's been some time since I did my last Botox session. Yes. And I got Botox on my jaw as well. My masseter, same. Yeah, Yeah, because I grind my teeth when I sleep <gasps> and then the muscle just became like a bit big, yeah. Yeah, super big. So my doctor advised that, you know, I just get 
a shot here. Mm. And then I have gone for fillers as well, only at my chin. So to just give my face a bit of that like V shape kind of look, mm. the pointy chin. Yeah. That's mm. about like, as much as I did. Yeah. What about you, Zura? I'm not holier than thou. I just don't have anything because I'm deathly afraid of needles. <laughs> she really All is. natural. Oh, yeah. she's me. Yeah. She's afraid of needles. Yeah. Naturally beautiful. No, no. Like, yeah, I, I had to look at her and give her moral support when she was getting a COVID vaccine. <laughs> It's true. <laughs> Hazy was in the line. The guy was like, uh, you want to call your friend and hold her hand? I was like, yes, please. <laughs> yeah, I'm just deadly afraid. And I think about it all the time. And I see them do it. And I'm always asking, like, what do you do? And like, I've thought about it for a very long time. Mm. I just cannot. Every time I ask them, like, uh, can numb or not? Mm. Or I'll be like, can you feel it? And they'll be like, yeah. And I'm like, yeah, no. Beauty mm. is pain, as they say. Yeah. It is. You can't feel it, it probably is not working. Actually, that is very true. Really? Sometimes I like my treatments to hurt because that's when I know they're working. Yeah. <laughs> are you okay? <laughs> yeah, maybe Even psycho. for treatments that like don't usually require like numbing creams, right? For you example. Ask for it, is can it? or not? <laughs> no, but I feel like most good treatments require numbing cream. Oh. oh. Because but is really it really numb? Is pain. Botox, Botox doesn't require numbing cream. Oh, though. but you still feel the pain. So yeah. the numbing cream is optional for you if you can withstand that pain. Oh. But we do give it as an option. Like, okay. do you need numbing cream? And then we, yeah. Usually so, I have no time for the numbing cream exactly. to work. So I just like, I, I just jump. I go for my pico and my Q switch. Just, just, just do it. Doctor. Wait, just no, do it. Numbing yeah. no numbing cream? Oh my God. <laughs> but I can. <laughs> but so pain. Yeah, and I asked my doctor to turn it up because I want the effects to be oh, seen. Wow. Oh, wow. Oh, my okay, goodness. Okay, okay. What, what have we done? Here's my theory. Okay. Masseter Botox is the gateway to all aesthetic treatments because a lot of people People go in with a medical reason. Yes. I grind my teeth. I don't want my tooth to crack. So yes. I get masseter Botox. Then after I got masseter Botox, I was like, hmm, hey, not that hold on on. <laughs> what else can I do? So I haven't done anything invasive, but I've just done Botox on, on some areas on my face that I don't want the lines to set in. Mm. Fillers, I think on my nose bridge, but that was like a okay. couple years back already. Okay. I never got them dissolved though, and okay. a bit in my lips. Apart from that, my body, I've been doing laser hair removal since I was 15. Mm. I'm like almost 30 now, and I've been mm. going to the same clinic for 15 <laughs> years. And I got this thing called Cool Sculpt done. Yes. Where basically they freeze your fat in like negative yeah. 10 degrees. It hurts like a fucking bitch. Babe, you got no fat. Have, have. have. <laughs> it fucking hurts. It fucking hurts. And then like, it hurts for days after that. Your <gasps> nerves are shooting off. <gasps> Is it healthy? No, I, I feel like it doesn't usually hurt for days oh God, after I was, that. I was like in pain and I've tried everything like all those ultrasound lifting. I've tried cryotherapy where you go into a thing and it's really, really cold. Then ultimately, she just decided to gym. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then I decided, maybe a healthy lifestyle <laughs> is the answer. It's the answer. <laughs> yeah. Pain-free. What about, it feels like you've had like a full spectrum of trying out the different Yeah, because I treatments. worked with this aesthetics clinic and ah. they would make me the guinea pig. Okay, okay, So I would okay. just be on to try anything. I'd be like, okay, mm. sure, mm. freeze me. <laughs> but your skin is great. Mm -hmm. You look you. great. Mm -hmm. So clearly it worked out right well. Can I right? tell you a funny story? One time I went to a plastic surgeon, right? And I said, doctor, like, I know you can do fat grafting for breast augmentation. Can you take my fats and put it into my boobs? And he looked at me and he started laughing. He was like, that's not enough to put into your boobs. Because apparently, it takes a lot. Yes. Because oh. you also, how do you say, like, reject some of it. Well, yeah, so not everything will set. Like, right, and right. Take. So you need a yeah. lot. You cannot say like, hey, but here I've got flap, here I've got flap. Oh. It's not enough. Yeah, and but they can't can go around sucking from the whole body. <laughs> That's like so much work. <laughs> but you can only suck from your own body fat to put into your own book. Usually, yeah. yeah. You don't really want to use someone else's. This is like, not very clean. <laughs> oh, <la>. <laughs> I see, I was just amazed by how this thing works, you no, know? No, but you can use implants. That's the much easier option. Okay, I'm scared. No, no, at the end of the day, I'm not gonna do it. I'm scared. Mm. So, oh, babe, yeah. you look great. Thank you. Close up on her no. face. <laughs> on her face. On the boobs, <laughs> not the face. <laughs> Can I share a funny story about Jermaine? She just got her lip fillers done. And then after a few days, I can't remember what it was, but I, I got think she was an ovarian feeling. cyst. Yes. And I ended up going for emergency keyhole surgery. In the hospital. In the hospital. This was during COVID, so my parents couldn't visit. And then her yeah. mother sees her on FaceTime. And her mother's like, girl! Your lips swollen! <laughs> She's like, are you like, allergic to the medicine? Aww. And that was when I told my mom that I got lip <laughs> I remember this story. Yeah, I was like, oh. And then she was like, you what? <laughs> <laughs> Quick, 
could have worn a mask. Like in COVID, it was very acceptable. Oh, to the way I'm yeah. <laughs> Actually true. According to our producers, we have done some research and across the web, mm. these are the top five most popular okay. done treatments. Okay. This is globally, right? Yeah. In general. Yeah, across okay. the web okay. in general. In fifth place, chemical peel. This is probably like more Caucasian. In like Asian skin, chemical peels not so great. Oh. Like it's like how in Caucasian skin lasers not so great, but in Asian skin lasers are very effective. It depends on your skin type. Chemical peels have like a, a higher risk of a side effect called post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. Damn. So this is when your skin gets like a bit dark after, for example, you know when you have a pimple and the pimple goes away, mm. it leaves this brown color yeah, mark. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. <laughs> Can I see it? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, or like when you fall, you scrape your knee and then mm. when your knee heals, it leaves this like brownish stain also. So yeah, there's post- <laughs> <laughs> So post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation happens more commonly in Asian skin as compared oh, to Caucasian skin. Right. So when you do things like strong chemical peels, it has to be strong then you get good results, right? You have higher risk of having these kind of complications and side effects and there's a lot of irritation to the skin as well. So because of that, the more common kind of chemical peels that are done locally tends to be the milder kind of chemical peels. I see. So the milder ones are not as, they don't burn as much. So mm. it, there's generally not much downtime and it's not really used as like a one treatment on its own. It's usually used like an adjunct, like you do a facial and then they oh. give you like a chemical Peel like a by the way kind of thing. <laughs> by the way, mm. like, but it's usually like together with oh, like other okay. treatments. So, so not, like, not super popular in Singapore. Not super popular. Um, actually, in fourth place, I feel like this one's quite popular. Microdermabrasion. Yes. Is that like pico? No, that's like micro needling. Oh, oh I've yeah. never done that. Okay, yeah. So micro needling is very easy to do because there it's not super painful and downtime is not that long either. Of course, there are like different settings and things like that. The stronger you go, the more downtime you have. But it can be done by therapists can do it because some of them are the very shallow kind of micro needling and then you have like the deeper ones that are done by the doctors itself oh. so because there's like a, such a huge variation of the different types of micro needling treatments available it's very easy for patients to mm. go and get it done and it treats like a lot of things like acne scars mm. and like um, your pores like improving your skin quality and things like that mm. I had done something which I feel sounds a little bit like that, but mm. I can't be sure until today. So I was in Korea and I was just like, oh, you know, I want to glow. And so she recommended me this thing. I think it's something to do with like hyaluronic acid, but okay. basically this head had like many, many, many needles and I made her numb my face for the longest time. <laughs> <laughs> as long as you can. <laughs> and then it just goes everywhere. Yeah, so I think that is probably, it sounds like a uh, micro needling. Okay. Yeah. So usually they put like some kind of serums or mm. actives and then mm. they kind of push it in mm. with the micro needling itself. Oh. Yeah. The glow is insane. Yeah, it's yeah. nice. In third place, this is one that's very, very common, laser hair removal. Mm. And has gone through like so many rounds of evolution just in the last decade alone. In second place, derma fillers, hyaluronic acid. Is this like profilo? No. So oh, derma I'm, fillers. I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? Profilo is more like skin boosters. Oh. So dermal fillers are fillers, like so the same as the mm. one that you did for your chin. Okay. And in first place, mm. ladies and gentlemen, ding, ding, Botox ding, ding, ding. injections yeah. mm. is the number one most done and treatments performed per year have increased nearly 900% since the year 2000. Whoa. It blocks off nerve endings to the skin, allowing the skin tone to increase dramatically. Would you I say, say I love Botox. that Botox is the most popular aesthetic treatment in Singapore? No way. Really? Really? Is it not? No. But what's the top what's the most three? Popular? Like Lasers top three. for sure. Oh. Oh. What laser in particular? So like, Pigment lasers, very okay. popular in, in like Pico in Singapore. Yeah, like the Pico because mm. in Asian skin we are very prone to getting pigmentation as compared to Caucasian mm. skin where they just burn, they don't get that okay. pigmentation. Yeah, so definitely lasers. Oh. One hundred. You know they have clinics that specialize in just doing lasers only, wow. like with no other injectables whatsoever. So you just it's like a factory. You go in and you see next day. Yeah, so it's like lasers definitely the most popular. Is Botox at least in top three? Yes, I would think. So, okay. yeah. So, Botox is also very, very common, especially now with there's more information out there. So, people are less afraid of getting Botox. Mm. In the past, people are always like, oh no, I don't want the frozen face look. Mm. But now, people want Botox everywhere. They want it on their neckline, uh, they want it on shoulders. Their, yeah, I'm every. Bit- I'm bit, yes, uh, no, yeah. I'm bit very legit though. That one is for the people who sweat too much. Oh, like, okay. Yeah. Legit so I question. Ask you. Yes, carry on. If you get it in your armpit, mm. will you sweat in other weird places? Like, will the sweat because glands... Because it can't come out there, yeah. so will it come out? Not like, really. I need no, to no, get no, out no, of no. your body. Like, no, no, no. 
<laughs> That's what I heard. It doesn't really work that way. Oh. <laughs> yes, it's not so quatang, so you don't have I'm very to. ticklish. I want to get it done, but I scared I punch my doctor in the face. Well, we numb it numb first. It. So no, but it's, tic- it's, yeah, like, it's tic- not ticklish, it's oh. pain, dude. Oh. Like, it's oh. pain. Oh. Uh. It's pain, it's needles. <laughs> Okay, how would Jermaine's armpit Botox experience be like? Check back in 10 episodes. If this, <laughs> if this video gets a million views, I will do it on camera for yes. you. <laughs> and Hush will sponsor. Yeah. <laughs> no, actual question, right? Because I have like sweaty palms. Yes. I've mm. thought about like Botox for a very long time. Ah, yes. It's going to hurt like a bitch, right? I mean, it does hurt la. Forget it lah. It's okay, I'll leave uh, with it. It's fine. Well, we can put numbing cream la, but... It hurts. And how long will it last? Yeah. It only lasts like a couple of months. And just yeah, one no jab point. or how many jabs? It's like a lot of jabs. Oh! <laughs> My friends! <laughs> Our producers all just went, uh. <laughs> yeah, just stick with no, the No, I cannot. The, the I think really palms. cannot. Yeah, you have to be able to withstand the pain. So that's why it's not so common. It's not okay. so complicated. Okay. okay. But you, you mentioned uh, lasers, mm. yes. Botox, one yes. of the, the top three. Yes. What's the third one? I would say skin boosters. Mm. Are like okay. all the rage these days. Um, so things like Profilo. Regeran. Have you heard like, the salmon skin thing? Oh, the yeah, salmon so one, yes. Yeah, so it's polynucleotide that helps to stimulate collagen in the skin mm. and give you that Korean glass skin. Actually, it's very interesting, Doctor, that you know you were saying like, oh, people were very scared of getting that frozen face look. Mm. Yeah. Now, does that come from Botox or fillers? Botox. Mm. Oh, really? Because yeah. it freezes your muscles, am I right? Yes, yeah. Botox, Botox relaxes your yeah. muscles, yeah. no? It relaxes the muscles mm. so your muscles cannot activate anymore. So mm. then because of that, you lose your facial expression. Right. Yeah. Last time when people were doing fillers, right? So this is mostly fillers. People use fillers to fill. That's why they're called fillers. Mm -hmm. They see a line over here and then I'm not happy with the line, I feel this line over here. I see a line over here, I'm not happy with the line, I feel this line over here. Over time, there's more and more weight. You're not addressing the main problem. There's a line over here because everything is sagging down. To treat that problem, you need to address the underlying sag rather than just filling the hole. You need Mm. to lift as well. Yes, you need to lift. So the main thing is that if there's a line over here, you don't inject here, but rather you inject the peripheries to lift it up and naturally this line will be less prominent also. So, I'm calling my aesthetic doctor after this episode. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah but I Ringing think a lot up. of people don't understand this concept. They say that, oh no, I want to do my under eyes. And then sometimes mm. when I explain to them, okay, in order to treat your under eyes, you actually need to inject other places to support the eye. Then you have good support of the eye. And then if you want to feel, you can always feel it then. Mm. But then they're like, no, 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 I only want to inject here. So if you keep doing that, always injecting the same hole, you're filling it over and over again. Over time, it just gets bulgier and bulgier. Mm. And you're not treating the underlying problem problem of the sagging. You're just creating more weight, you're causing it to sag more. Can I just ask, which parts of your face do you have fillers? Me? Myself? Yes, yourself. What? Everywhere. (laughs) (laughs) Wait, in your cheeks? Yeah. In your cheek? Yeah. In your nose? Uh, Okay, nose is somewhere that I don't Your nose is perfect. No, no, it's not. Side profile, I'm looking at her from the side. It's very nice. Because the nose is kind of like a high risk zone, so I don't Uh, like doing fillers in the nose. But you have it in your cheeks? Yeah, so I have it in like my temples, cheeks. Your temples? Uh, Yeah. Because this is very important to lift the outer eye so that your eyelid don't sag. Where, where do you... So like... <laughs> wait, are we t- we're talking feelers, right? Yes, yeah. okay. Fillers. Yeah, so I have like here as well as here for temples. And then I have it in my cheek over here. I have it in the outer part in front of the ear here. I have it in my jaw as well. And then I have it in the chin. I also have it in like some in the mid cheek. Essentially, I have it everywhere. Okay, I I haven't done lips. I haven't done nose. Because those are the two areas that I don't foresee myself with an issue yet. Mm, So for now, not yet. And it's also like so painful. Uh. But but (laughs) the point is, I couldn't tell. Yes. 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 To me, it looked like she had no fillers. Mm -hmm. But that's exactly how fillers should be done. Because Mm. the point for me when I did fillers is that I felt that with aging, I was changing. So it's exactly what I told you guys earlier. When I looked at my photo from when I was 29 and I looked at my photo at like 29 and a half, I really feel like, oh my God, I look so much older. I look so much more tired. I was sagging more. And when I smiled, for example, my smile looked like a bit sadder. It's something that as you age, it happens. You know, when you notice just like your grandparents, your grandma, for example, like a lot of them, they don't like to smile for photos because they'll see like, I wear a smile, not nice, not nice. Mm. And then because of that, they always look angry and sad. And this is because as your muscles get more lax, there are a lot of muscles that are pulling up the sides of your lips, right? When they start to get more lax, they lose their energy mm. and then they can't lift it as much. And then that's why as you age, your mouth goes like oh, this. Yeah. Mm. So when you lift it all back up, everything restores back to when it was younger. So when I did fillers, it wasn't to change anything structurally because that's not the objective. Mm. I just wanted to go back 
back to mm. what I was before. Mm. I knew someone that told me once that she went to Korea and got the sides of her face cut and they pull it oh, back and they like staple, staple it. <laughs> is that a real thing? So that is a facelift. That's invasive. But that's surgery. Yeah, that's oh. surgery. I was just going to say, I have a friend oh, whose yeah. mom is about like maybe 55, 60 this year. Yeah. Just spent $50,000. Yeah on an entire facelift. Oh my god. Oh. So for two months... Your- is that Chris Jenner? Because... <laughs> <laughs> No, so for two weeks straight, my friend had been calling her mom a cab to and fro the clinic. Mm. Yes. Because she must have looked like so bad. Like, you know, the downtime is quite, yeah. Yeah, it's quite yeah. intense. But it's transformative. So after that, your friend's mom's going to look like Woo! suddenly, who is that? You know? So hot. Do you think you'll get that done, doctor? Like in your 50s, 60s? I think if you maintain from when you're young and you do these kind of treatments... I expect to look not much older than I do now. (laughs) Fingers crossed. Mm. So I don't have to do that. I don't have to go and do a drastic treatment Mm. if I have been maintaining myself the entire time. Mm. And then that's when you truly can age gracefully because you will look like yourself through time. As compared to when you wait until you are super Mm. old and saggy and then you go for this one surgery one time gonna be like oh my god who are you <laughs> or like you're not gonna look like yourself anymore you suddenly like changed overnight and that's not something that most people want like okay. yeah so you just want to look youthful but still yourself okay speaking about maintenance i'm sure like many of our viewers or listeners will be like my sister okay my sister has very good skin mm. porcelain skin but the only skincare she uses tap water oh i kid you not wow. every night tap water wash your face okay i'm it's done it's always like that it's the, yeah. always the people who just use water on their face Correct, yeah. but what i've been telling my sister is you wait you wait until you're like 35 or like 40 mm. it will start showing mm. but is that true true really huh <laughs> <laughs> No, but I don't think her skin will suddenly drastically change. But it's just that like water doesn't spare you from aging. So you're going to get all your lines. The amount of collagen in your skin is going to decrease drastically. And then your skin is going to end up looking thinner. You're going to end up with a lot of pigmentation. The skin quality is going to be bad if you don't take care of it with like sunblock and things like that. So she will look aged like if she doesn't maintain herself. By the time she's like 35, 40, she's going to look aged. Like, not a good 35 or 40. Sis, you're hearing this? You You say that. (laughs) I have two questions, right? The first one is, does oral collagen actually work? No, on TikTok, they're selling these like sachets where you just drink it. They're like, oh, you don't like Botox. It's Botox at home. Just drink it. Yeah, exactly. I think the answer to that is no. But I won't say that like collagen supplements are a complete scam. It's just that it doesn't do what most of the Instagram ads tell you it does. It doesn't replace Botox. It's not going to give you magical skin. Most of the time, what what collagen supplements give you is raw materials for your body to create its own collagen. Because oh. when you're eating the collagen, it doesn't get absorbed into your body and go into your skin, for example. So most of the time it's digested, it's broken down to all the different like amino acids. And then your body uses that to create its own collagen. Oh. So for example, if you are going to do a treatment that is to stimulate collagen, like for example, you do a retroan treatment, like mm. the, the salmon skin one. And now your body's processes are increased in terms of collagen production. The factories are running at full capacity. Mm. If you give it a lot of raw materials, mm. it's going to be able to create the collagen much better mm. as compared to when the body has to keep sourcing for raw materials on its own. And if that's something that your body lacks right now, mm. then you're going to see a difference because now your body is able to you know, work at a higher capacity because there's more ingredients for it to make the collagen. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. I think we also want to, you know, be balanced, right? Like at the end of the day, yes, I know we were talking a lot about aesthetic treatments, but they also come with some sort of risks. I think depending Mm. on how good your doctor is as well, even with a professional, right? Are there risks involved? For sure. There are always risks. Like no matter what treatment you do, there is always some risk involved. And every time you do a treatment, your doctor should be explaining those risks to you. You have to sign a form. Yes, especially in Singapore, we're very strict about it. But you have to understand that no matter what treatment you do and no matter how skilled your doctor is, there is always that tiny, 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 tiny risk that it might happen. Just like, you know, when you cross a road, you don't know when you might get hit by a car. You know, it's this kind of thing. Doesn't mean you don't cross a road forever, but you just have to be careful. when you do it but you have to also understand that underlying there is always still that risk have you seen like patients who had like a bad job and then came to youth like save it? yeah so oh. many i tell you it's all from korea oh. <laughs> <laughs> jing, 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 jing. 
Okay, because in Korea, the treatments are so cheap, yeah. right? So everyone goes to Korea to get like a whole bunch of treatments done and they don't even know what they're doing like you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I guess it's the, the language barrier, first of all. And secondly, it's like because in Korea, they have like so many options. Mm. Like, you're not even sure what each of them are or what the differences is. And then you just rely entirely on the salesperson to just be like, yeah, you should just do this package and then ta 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 ta, ta. Mm. And then you're like, okay, well, I just do. And then after that, there is no follow-up whatsoever. When there is a problem, like, they never help. So, mm. like, most of the patients who have come to us um, with issues from their treatments in Korea, right? They will email them and then the person will be like, oh yeah, sure, you should just monitor or like you can come down to the clinic, we help you check. And they're like, I'm in Singapore, I can't come down to your clinic. Mm. So then they're like, oh, then you just monitor law. Mm. So there is not much incentive for them to help you. And also they can't really help you because you are so far away, right? Mm. So most of the time what happens is that after a few exchanges, they just stop replying altogether. And then you are there by yourself. Helpless. What's the worst you've seen? Okay, I don't think there's worse or not worse. They're all just like, bad. Oh, <laughs> like so what, what, what really shook you? Yeah. I think actually like my definition of worse, right, is actually the impact on the patient. Mm. Like rather than how bad it looks. Okay, because most of the time, no matter how bad it looks, because like I see this all the time, right? So to me, it's fine. But to the patient, it's not fine. And their lives are very affected. When it affects your face, a lot of people find that they can't leave their house. Mm. And then, because the exchanges take months, right? You email them, they'll tell you, oh, just monitor it for like one more mm. month. And then you wait one month and it, the problem is still there. All in all, this patient like took six months before she eventually went to seek help in a local clinic because the Korean people just kept telling her that like, ah, it's okay. You just watch it. It'll go away. But the point is that it didn't go away. Like, what was yeah. the problem? So the fillers were placed at a wrong level, like a wrong oh. plane. So then it looked obvious on the skin. So fillers are supposed to look like this, right? You're not supposed to be able to see like one bum, one bum, one right? But in her case, because it was injected in the wrong plane, it was injected a bit too superficially. That's why it was all like bumps and stuff. Mm. It was literally Bumpy. bumps all over her Ooh. skin. Oh. So she said like it really affected her her life because she couldn't go out. She couldn't go to work. Her confidence must have been yes, like shattered. exactly. And like during this period, she didn't meet any of her friends or oh. anything. Oh. The treatment is relatively simple because fillers just melt, right? Like, mm. But then because like no one told her, if she did it in a clinic in Singapore, the moment you come back to the clinic, they would be like, oh, we're so sorry, we'll, we'll fix this for you. And then it would have been settled then and then she would have gotten a refund, etc. But because this clinic was so far away, like she couldn't go back for a consult. Nobody could to tell her what to do also. And anyway, so she was stuck with it for so many months, just like hiding at home. But how do you resolve the issue? Melt it, like. Melt it and then do it again for her. So after that, we did it again. But initially, you melt it. You just leave it. You let it settle first. Oh. Like, yeah. So, but once you melt it, the bumps disappear. And then she's back to normal again. Like, <sighs> yeah. Thank so, God. not that like, if you did it in Singapore, you would definitely not have complications. But if there are problems, at least there is someone who's there and ready mm. to help you with it. Accountability mm. yes. as well, right? Yeah. yeah. And a lot of these treatments can be reversed mm. also. Like, if let's say there truly is a problem, mm. you can always, like, fix it. Mm. But you have to let the doctor know. Yeah. So, doctor, what would you say to, like, someone that is listening to this, right? And this person is like, well, I don't want to get any aesthetic treatments. I am fine with aging gracefully. Mm. I think the lines represent, you know, the life I've lived. What would you say to those people? Good for you, lah. <laughs> <laughs> you do you, boo. No, seriously, seriously, yeah. good for you. Yeah, yeah. Good for you, man. Like, as long as you feel confident in your own skin and you think that... I I look fine the mm. way I am and I'm happy with how I am, then, you know, by all means, like, yeah, I just mm. proceed. <laughs> <laughs> Can I share a funny story? Mm -hmm. So, I was hosting an event. It was one of those events with, like, volunteer medical staff. So, there was a doctor near me. And then she had come up to me to ask me something. And then after a while, I was like, oh, you're on duty. And she was like, oh, yeah, I volunteered for this. But actually, like, I don't really do these things because I'm an aesthetic doctor. And then I was like, oh, cool. And then she looks at me and she goes... You don't have Botox, right? Come to my clinic, I do for you. I offended her. I was like, is there something wrong with my face? Why are you look at me and tell that? But you still didn't you didn't get it done. But no, I didn't. Free, <laughs> uh, free Botox. Uh. She asked me to come la. Oh, but no, like, you should have jumped on it, man. Offended her. Jimmy, you're not such bad friends. Free do la. Free do la. Well, I was like, 
Let me see, let me see. No need la. Yeah, you glow in. You glow in, boo. Yeah, but of course, I'm sure that like not just women, men out there seek aesthetic treatments as well, right? Mm, yes. So, doctor, any final words of advice for listeners or viewers of Hush Podcast, be it men or women, who want mm. to go for aesthetic treatments? Mm, I feel like don't be afraid to go. Don't be afraid of like judgment or anything because aesthetic treatments are something to help you gain more confidence with mm-hmm. yourself. It's something that you're doing for yourself. It's not for anyone else. You don't have to be accountable to like your mother, your husband, boyfriend, whatever, okay? It's for yourself. If you think that it will give you more confidence, it'll make you happier, then just go for it. Like, go get a consultation at the very least. Let the doctor explain the treatments that you need to you so that you're not afraid and you feel that you can make an informed choice. For sure. Well, I yeah. have two final thoughts. Okay. Mm. Go to a licensed professional, mm. someone Please. that you trust, read mm. the reviews, mm-hmm. and don't put yourself in debt trying yes. to make yourself more beautiful because that would sure. be worse. Yeah. Mm. yeah debt sure. will age you more than any aesthetic treatment <laughs> or lack of will. Don't mm. skim on what you put on your face. Yes. Yeah. Oh yes, I mm. think that is very, mm. very important. And I always believe in a very healthy lifestyle. I always mm. believe it's um, 70% diet, 30% exercise. I mean, if you have your lifestyle worked out for you, then there might be like less chances of you aging faster. So Mine you know, is always... 100% keep my fingers crossed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working on that with Azura, okay? I I'm working like on that. As long as you put effort into mm. it, most of the time you get to see the results. Like yeah. I can see that you guys, like your skin, is nice your face oh. shapes are nice because you guys put in effort to it but if you are the kind of person that just completely gives up and expects your skin to glow on its own then no it's not gonna mm. happen yeah so you just gotta work to it be it diet exercise going for treatments these are all effort mm-hmm. like yeah so as long as you put in effort to it you'll see some kind of results wow mm. I learned so much from this episode alone thank you so much Dr. Jessica oh, thank you <laughs> Well, if you like this episode as well, don't forget to follow us on Instagram at itsclarity.co. That's right. You can listen to us on Me Listen, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and turn on your notifications. And as always, check us out on YouTube. You don't want to miss this extreme close-up right now of Dr. Jessica's beautiful, <laughs> flawless face. <laughs> but thank you so much, Dr. Jessica. We learned thank so you. much from you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. See you guys. <laughs> Have you ever given yourself Botox? Yes, of course. Oh. Wow. You can oh. do that for yourself? I actually use wow. the Rejuram mask at mm. home. Yes. And I always realise the next morning, my skin be glowing. Yeah. Really? But the mask be hell of a bitch. It's, it's damn, damn expensive. expensive. <laughs> oh my god. How much is <laughs> it? Very expensive. My clinic sells it for $15. One oh, yeah, shit. I, I got okay. it like per box. It's easy. very expensive. No. My, it's my regular face mask is $30 per mask. Eh. Oh I use it every day. Yeah. yeah. So $15, that's okay. I got well, like, you guys, like, to me, it's expensive. I'm like, what? It's very expensive. 